Hello and welcome. So this video goes through the process of a step-by-step -step guide using Azure files and shares with NTFS permissions applied with private endpoints. In a traditional file server environment, users will connect to Windows file server shares either in the cloud or on-premise. We can replace and decommission these aging Windows file servers with Azure files in the cloud, which offers us a seamless solution uh, hosting our NTFS shares via SMB in the cloud that integrates with Active Directory authentication. So users inside the virtual network can connect to shares and also any users outside of the virtual network can connect using a private endpoint. The private endpoint allows connections using a secure private IP address from within the address space of your virtual network. Users can then connect to Azure file shares from on-premise using either a VPN or express route with private Appearing. We will also show how to block all public connections uh, to the public endpoint, which disables access to the Azure file shares via SMB over the internet using port 445. So let's get started, but before we do, please subscribe to the channel for future video post updates on Azure Cloud and certification. Thank you. So we will go through the process from start to finish. We will create our storage account in the cloud for Azure files and then running a series of PowerShell scripts uh, modules um, to configure our subscription variables and register the storage account with Active Directory. We will then assign our share level and NTFS permissions to allow us to connect to the Azure file share. And then from that point, we will be able to create files and folders within our share, just like we do now, with a traditional Windows file server share. Finally, we will show how to connect to the share outside of the virtual network using a private endpoint. Okay, let's start by creating our storage account to host all our data files. So we go to storage accounts, and click create, we choose our resource group, in this case it's RG1, Choose our storage account name, in this case it's CI Share. So make sure the storage account name does not have more than 15 characters, which is not supported as a SAM account name to create the object. If you do go over the 15 character limit when you run the script later on to create the AD object, it will fail. We will host this in UK South with standard performance and choose GA Redundant Storage Replication or GRS for short. So by selecting this option, all our data is replicated to another physical location in the secondary region to protect against uh, regional outages. For instance, instance if UK South were to go down. And then within the secondary region your data is copied synchronously three times using local redundant storage. Depending on your requirements and budget please choose the required replication and performance for your own needs. We don't enable any data protection or uh, in advanced we, we leave these as defaults. So Azure Large Files um, which enables the storage account to scale up to um, 100 TIB and increasing IOPS is, is also not enabled because it's not supported for GA redundant storage at this time. So again, please review your requirements to fit your environment. And then after reviewing the settings, we can then create the storage account. So now we download the AZ Files hybrid module from GitHub to allow us to configure our subscription variables and register the storage account with Active Directory. So let's download and extract. We will now run the series of PowerShell commands required to enable ADDS authentication. So these are listed in the Microsoft document, links are below within the description. So let's set the execution policy to unrestricted. Let's copy the required files. Let's import the module. The 
part in Word is just explaining you must close all PowerShell sessions to use a new version installed. We can now define our script parameters, which is the subscription ID, which we can copy from the portal, together with the resource group name and storage account name. We select the to target subscription for the current session. And then we register the storage account name in the required OU. OK, so let's confirm the storage account is enabled and registered by running the, the last set of commands. And then we can now check um, with an Active Directory if our storage account name is visible. Now we can assign share level permissions in the Azure portal using IAM to an identity. What we do here is we have three sync groups from on-premise AD um, sync to Azure AD, which contains our users to give them the correct permission. So there are three Azure built-in roles for granting share level permissions to users. So we have SMB share reader, so that allows read access. We have SMB share contributor that allows read, write and delete access. And we have SMB shared elevated contributor. So that allows read, write, delete and modify. So we can now assign our sync groups we created, uh, which contain our users who need the different permissions to these role assignments. So let's start with SMB share contributor role, which we can then assign to our group. We created store contributor group. So we will do the same with the elevator contributor and the reader roles as shown. So now we are in the position to connect to the share within the virtual network. So first we will copy our access keys and paste them in the following net use command. So this is to connect our storage account to object CI store 01 we created in AD earlier. So this command is mapping the S drive to Azure file share name using our storage account object with the access keys which are grayed out. So now we've configured NTFS permissions on the share by using the same synced AD groups we assigned earlier using the Azure portal and IAM, i.e. store contributor group, the store elevator contributor group and the store reader group. We configure directory and file level permissions as follows, giving an example or adding some user permissions to folders. Now that we've assigned some permissions, we can create some test example files successfully in the Azure file share, then see these at the Azure file share level within the portal.
from another device for a user that is a member of a group um, that has permissions to access the share, we can map the S drive simply by running uh, a net use command. Then this integrates with Active Directory authentication credentials and maps the drive successfully. However, we have set NTFS permissions for this user to not have access to the WVD directory. Therefore, we are getting an access denied as expected, showing that the permissions are working correctly. Instead of users connecting internally within the virtual network, we will now set up a private endpoint to permit any users outside the Azure virtual network to connect privately, uh, not over the internet. This allows connections using a secure private IP address from within the address space of your virtual network. Users can then connect to the Azure file shares from on-premise using either a VPN or express route um, connection with private peering. So we run a, an NS lookup to our storage address and can see this points to an external public IP with no private aliases assigned. So go to the storage account, click networking and under private endpoint connection, we add a private endpoint. So we choose a name. resource type of Microsoft storage slash storage accounts. We choose a storage resource and select the target as file. Then select the VNet and subnet for the private network. We will leave the rest as default and click next and review and then create. This then creates the uh, private NIC with a private IP on that subnet. So in this instance, it's 10.0.1.7. We can see a uh, private DNS has also been created. So for our internal DNS, we create a new forward lookup zone For our internal DNS, we create a new forward lookup zone for the storage account name to point to the private IP address. We also block all public connections to the public endpoint under firewalls and virtual networks. So this disables access to the Azure file shares via SMB over the internet using port 445. Now, if we try and connect to the storage account over the public endpoint over the internet on port 445, it fails because it is now blocked. We now connect to the Azure VNet using a VPN to connect to the private endpoint. If you need to know how to set up an Azure VPN, there's a video in my channel. Links are below in the description how to do this. Running IP config shows that we are using internal DNS. 
where we created the forward lookup zone to resolve our storage address to the private endpoint IP. When we ping the address, it resolves to the internal private IP 10.0.1.7. And then we successfully use our net use command to map the S drive to the private endpoint. And then finally, we can create um, our text file um, within our endpoint. And then we can check the, the file is correctly created within the Azure file shares uh, within the Azure portal. So thank you very much for watching the video. Please subscribe to the channel to receive updates on new videos posted weekly. All the very best. Take care and see you in the next video. Bye for now.